What do I do when people react poorly to my prices? Welcome to You Asked, our short form podcast where we answer your questions that you have submitted. If you would like to submit a question for me or Nick to answer, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash survey, and who knows, your question might end up on the air. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at howtofilmweddings.com slash delivery. How are you delivering your wedding films? Are you just sending a YouTube link? Or are you just embedding it onto your website? You might want to consider one of our partners over at howtofilmweddings.com slash delivery. Got options for you to pick from where you can send and deliver wedding films in a much more professional way. Again, that's our friends over at howtofilmweddings.com slash delivery. Now to our question today from Brian Kelsch of BK Media. He says, what do I do when people react poorly to my prices? I don't know about you, but uh, there have been lots of times in my brand where people almost laugh me out of the room after I send the prices. You know, I don't know if you ever heard this one where it's like, oh my goodness, I had no idea you would charge that much for a, just a wedding video. Or, oh my gosh, that's like three times more expensive than I thought it was going to be. We're not going to be able to afford that at all. Or, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You charge that much? They're, they're reacting poorly to your prices. And so today's short form podcast, we're going to just break down how to, how to react to that, what to do with that, and maybe some mindset things to change uh, the way people perceive our brand before they get to that point of reacting poorly to our prices. So the first thing I would like to say is be self-aware. And what I mean by that is ask yourself or ask for feedback and um, for what your brand should be charging. Like, are your prices fair for your market and for the quality that you offer? You know, do you have good relationships with other vendors? Do you have work that backs it up? Do you have good relationships with previous clients? Be self-aware. If people go to your website and they think it's cheap and your films look cheap and your copy on your website is cheap and your social media sucks and you just don't do a good job with your brand and you're unaware of this, people are going to be upset when you charge the, or try to charge them more than they think it's worth. And so you have to be self-aware and sometimes that's really hard to do. So find some friends, find some people to look through your website, your branding, and just see if they think the work is good. They think that there needs to be work. And then know your market. Like you need to know whether or not there are other people charging more or less in the same market. Because if you're talking to a bride, let's say, she's probably talked to two or three other filmmakers. And if your prices are three times as much, yet your work isn't as good, you might be getting laughed out of the room because you're just not self-aware. So be self-aware. Know if your prices stack up in your network or in your community or against whoever it is that you might be competing against for that work. Number two, if someone reacts poorly, uh, moving outside of like just the mindset side of things, you want to be respectful. Um, sometimes people just don't know that video costs as much as it does. They don't realize that you have to be trained with expensive gear and buy the gear and bring lenses and all this editing time. They just don't have a clue. And so if somebody reacts poorly to your prices, you don't want to be like, well, screw you. Like I know that my worth, I'm worth this or whatever. You can still be respectful and you can communicate to them. Yeah. You know, I know that there might be some sticker shock, but when you think about it, all that we do to get you this product, even just the renting the cameras alone would cost this much or knowing how to use them. There's a lot of skills that go into this and we get it that it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. So, you know, if you, if you don't see that value in what we're doing, we totally understand. And one of my things that I do with people, if they've reacted negatively or say, well, these people only charged this much. My response is never getting into a bidding war to lower my prices. I'll just respond to them respectfully and it kind of messes with their head. But if they say, well, so-and-so is charging this much, could you match them? I will say, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that. We don't offer discounts. We know the value of what we're doing. Uh, we know how much work it takes to put into it. And if that company is willing to give you 
what I'm willing to give you and you can't tell a difference in the quality of work or the relationship that you've already had with me versus them, I would strongly encourage you to go with that other company. Why would you even be considering me if if you like their prices better and their work? And that messes with people because a lot of times they will try to use that technique to get you to lower your prices, to make you uncomfortable with who you are and what you're offering, but they really like your work way better. And they're just, they want you or they wouldn't be asking that question. And so they want you and they're saying, well, can you lower your prices? They want that quality. And if you're unwilling to move on that, some people will say, yeah, we're going to have to go with the other, the other brand. But the people that say, well, I get it. I've had a lot of people after I've communicated, hey, if you think that their work is just as good and if you think that the price is better and it's going to be just as great to work with them, go with them. You know, I'll, I'll tell them that. And you can see the look on their face and they're like, well, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. It's just like, I didn't understand the difference, but I get it. Like your work is just so much better than theirs. And it makes sense after hearing from you all that you put into it, why it's so much more expensive. And then they book me and then there's this level of respect. And so um, if you're just respectful, you know, like be respectful, help them understand. But I think the main overarching thing that I haven't communicated yet is if people are like reacting poorly to your prices, I would say you need to back up a few steps. And if you haven't proven the value of the brand before they see the prices, you are doing a poor job. When people come to me and they see johnbunfilms.com, they see my logo, they see the kinds of films I have on my website, they see the copy, they see my headshots, they see my social media, everything about it, I'm hoping that I'm self-aware enough It screams that it's not cheap. That's my goal. And it screams that I'm a true professional that's going to build them a -a one-of-a-kind piece of art. Those are not words that you use whenever you're talking about cheap. The logo design does not look cheap. My headshots do not look cheap. The work does not look cheap. Everything is screaming, okay, this is going to cost us some money. This guy has got to be one of the best in the world at this. Maybe you're a wedding filmmaker and you're like, I've seen your films, John. They're not as good as Films by Stanton and they're not as good as Sculpting with Time or whoever. You're right. But the person that's on my site is looking at my work and seeing something that is way better than 99% of the other filmmakers that they've seen. And if they land it on my site, they can immediately see a difference. And so they can really tell, okay, this is expensive. And everything I do from the time that they inquire all the way up until their, their consultations and their booking is showing them a white glove first class experience. I think about hotels and staying at different hotels. And it's like, I've stayed at resorts in Santa Barbara, five-star resort, the Bacara resort. I think about that's where my wife and I did our 10 year vow renewal. When you walk in, their words are different. Their outfits are different. The logo is different. It smells different. There's fresh flowers everywhere. There's a personal assistant to take you to your room. There's a letter that's written by hand on your bed and some chocolates and uh, the nice robes and everything is just luxurious. I expect to pay a premium for that. And when they say, yeah, it's a thousand dollars a night for the room, I'm not like, what? I can't believe it costs this much. Or when they say, yeah, your breakfast is going to be a hundred dollars. I'm not sitting there saying, what? Like, it's eggs and bacon. No, it's eggs and bacon, but the view is over the ocean and the way it's prepared is beautiful and perfect and the experience. All of this screams, this costs a lot of money. And what happens is if you haven't done your job beforehand, maybe you're coming across as like a Motel 6. Maybe they look at your brand and say, I don't know about this. And so you have to be self-aware. You have to be respectful. And if you haven't proven the value of your brand before they see the prices, you're not doing your job. So take a look at your website this week. Take a look at your videos, your your branding, and, and have that confidence in yourself to know your value, to know your numbers, know your worth, and stick to it. So what does your brand say about you and what do people expect from your pricing based on your work? Think about those things this week. Hopefully this uh, episode was helpful to you. I know that I love talking about 
prices and branding and things of that nature. So if you have a question for me about this episode or want to go deeper, leave it in the comments below this video or even better, head over to Instagram at how to film weddings and shoot me a quick message. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Let us know if you're liking these. We've gotten a ton of really good feedback. We love the shorter 10 to 12 minute episodes just so you can have something quick and easy that'll help you and get your mind uh, set the right way for your day. So last but not least, I wanted to remind you of our friends over at howtofilmweddings.com slash delivery. If you need somewhere to go to get your wedding films delivered and you don't know where to find the right companies, be sure to check out that list over at our website, howtofilmweddings.com slash delivery. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, we will see you.